Hello everyone, welcome to the Saudi Pavilion. My name is Yusuf. Today I'll be a tour guide for the Saudi Pavilion Expo 2020 Dubai. If you can't see the design of the pavilion, it's going high to the sky because it represents the Saudi limitless Saudi ambitions too. And you can also see the design of the pavilion is by Boris Mika Associations. It's designed by a Spanish designer too. The pavilion is the size of 13,000 square meters pavilion. It is the size of two football fields. Our pavilion is the largest pavilion after the welcoming house, the United Arab Emirates Pavilion. Our pavilion have achieved also three Guinness World Records. We have achieved the large interactive LED mirror screen. It is 1,302 square meters. And we also have achieved the large interactive lightning floor. It is 7,798 lightning floors. Later, I will show you the third one. The longest interactive water feature in the Palm Garden later. How many different um, uh, shows go on on these big screens? So on the screen, it's like every five minutes or 30 minutes. But we have like the Saudi performance dance. It's every one hour. It's from 6.30 p.m. until 9.30 p.m. Nice. Uh, so the uh, um, visitors are greeted with all sorts of beautiful graphics uh, yeah. made by Saudi graphic designers or? Yeah, uh, it's by KLT company. Yeah. KLT. All right. Uh, so, uh, and then we're gonna we're gonna walk inside, right? Yeah, sure, no problem. Right. I'll be. We will take you to the journey of the past, the present, and the future of Saudi Arabia. Let's go, everyone. Okay. Right. Yeah. Let's go this way. So, a couple of days ago, we have celebrated more than one million visitors came to the Saudi Pavilion, actually. And it's just uh, the it's still th three four months left of the expo, right? Until the until the March of 2022. So there's still time for many more millions of people yes. to walk this way through, or yeah, sure, come with me, everyone. Here. Okay. Uh, what's happening out here? So this is the palm leaf. So they make palm leaves from the art style too. It represents also the traditional culture of Saudi Arabia. All right. Okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah. You can also see how he do, does the leaf too. Yeah. So he's wrapping the leaf together. It's like he's making a lot of shapes from the art style of Saudi Arabia. And this can be used for uh, containing food? Baskets and, and cask like baskets and also like a plate. We also use the bread when we put it on these uh, basket too. Special bread? Like we put bread on it or we like uh, uh, or removing the dust from the old ancient times we used to use for these leaves too for um, like for cooling ourselves or like uh, removing the dust from the deserts or the sand what from our house, house too what is this so this is the art style of Saudi Arabia we're showing them the Ahsa oasis and Ula region so we are so showing them so many places that represent our culture in Saudi Arabia Saudi Arabia is welcoming tourists from all over the world? Yes, we opened the tourism visa in 2019. And right now we're also um, bringing visitors too. They just need two vaccine shots and a PCR test. And they can get also electronic visa to enter Saudi Arabia too. All right, let's, let's walk around. Yeah, sure. Okay, I'll follow you. So we saw just the Ahsa Oasis in the UNESCO World Heritage Place. On the screen. Um, I also heard that Saudi Arabia is uh, applying to host the World Expo. That is correct in 2030. It also represents the vision of 2030 too. I hope that we win the UNESCO, uh, the, the world, the vision of 2030. I hope so too. Yeah, lights. lights. This is the largest interactive lighting floor. We have 7,798 floors. Nice. It's like nearly uh, 4K pixels. Not quite, but yeah, a lot of correct. pixels. All right. And uh, this makes for an attractive uh, entrance with the lights and everything. And you said it, it kind of like in the middle of the expo. Yes, it's like it's like in the entrance. So at night it becomes very colorful. Colorful. So a lot of kids run around these places too, around the squares. It's also censored. Like it's very sensor because. When you walk around it, the light also pops out with colors too. So this is the entrance of the Saudi Pavilion. All right. 
uh, there's a symbolism about walk, walking down the uh, what's the idea here so the idea is that we want to show them how it looks like with the side performance dance and we also show them the water curtain too yeah so sometimes at, during the night there's some Saudi performance they do it inside the middle of the water curtain too so people wait here and see the the performance in the Saudi pavilion and you're getting uh, the lights going all the way down this yeah. uh, this corridor you just look up and you got the show going on up there and down here I see people are taking a kind of like a shower. Yeah, it's actually it was it was supposed to be an art entertainment style water curtain. People used to walk on the sidewalks, but when we opened the expo, a lot of children, kids, they entered the yeah. the water curtain. So it became a, a part of our entertainment in the Saudi pavilion. So a lot of them they join inside the water curtain to get a spectacular view of the scenes. Interaction. Yeah, it's actually a fun interaction. And they don't get wet? Yes, you do, but when, you, when you're lucky to enter the water curtain without spilled by water or showered by water, it will be very lucky. It will be very lucky, actually. So there's actually a timing to enter the water curtain and to leave it, too. All right. So some of them are very lucky not to be showered by water. Uh, or some people do get uh, yeah. showered. Uh, so so uh, it's something that happens in Saudi Arabia also. Everybody wants to get uh, cool. cool. Yeah, uh, that's true. You have squares with uh, fountains and everywhere. Yeah, actually, so a lot of people, they join in this water curtain when they wait on the line too, because they want to enjoy a, a very spectacular way in the Saudi pavilion. So our pavilion is very, um, a lot of people come to the Saudi pavilion. It has been 30% all the visitors at Expo, they visited the Saudi pavilion. Yeah. Yeah, so so uh, people are queuing up a little bit to experience this. Right here, this is what we're doing. And then the next batch can enter. All right. You want to make sure there's not too many people at the same time, all right? Uh, how, many, how much space do you have in the pavilion? How many people can be there at the same time? So, Thousand. Uh, uh, every day it's like less like the least is 15,000 people every day but mostly like every day they come like 22,000 20,000 during the weekend they come like 30,000 the most record that we had was on the 26th of October we had 39,000 visitors coming to the Saudi pavilion that day uh, so for the uh, GCC countries as many pavilions and many uh Big, big investment here, the expo. Right? Yeah, that is true. Because um, you're proud. Yeah, we have we have to be very proud because it is also our achievement. Not only Saudi Arabia, also every GCC countries too. All right, courageous, courageous people right here. I'm not gonna try with my camera, but I'm just gonna try to grab a little bit. Okay, let's not try with the camera. Okay, so this is entrance. Yeah, this is the entrance, the welcoming area. So if you can see the screen, these are the landscapes of Saudi Arabia. So we want to show them like the, the, the winter in north of Tobuk, how it snows, all the gold sand dunes in the empty quarter, the Baradani Valley in the south region of Saudi Arabia. So this place is showing the people that Saudi Arabia isn't only a big desert at all, if you may notice it. So a lot of people, when they enter the pavilion, they think that Saudi Arabia is only a big desert. So this screen is showing them the five landscapes of Saudi Arabia, like the Farasan Island in the south region of Saudi Arabia, the empty quarter, and also the the Red Sea too, which we show them the coral reefs and the, the types of fishes too. Uh, it's a very, very wide, big LED display. Right? Yeah, it is 68 uh, meters long. This, uh, 68 meters. Yeah. You need a very big living room to have one of these at home. Yeah. All right. Okay, so where do we go? Yeah, we will start yeah. through the past, the present, yeah. and the future of Saudi Arabia. Right Whoa. now we will go through the past. Let's, 
it's a high. Yeah. So this is the heritage escalator. We will show you 14 heritage places, five of them listed in UNESCO. Actually, three months ago, we have listed the, the Najran, uh, Hamam Najran in the south of Saudi Arabia. So it's supposed to be six, but the, the expo has, has been finished like the design uh, before five, five months ago. So right now we will show you the heritage places in Saudi Arabia. So this is the Taraf districts in Riyadh. It is also the first capital of Saudi Arabia. Also the royal family used to live there too. And this is Hijra in Madain Salih al-Ula. It is also similar to Petra in Jordan. So we created this place, this art style, because we want to show them the, the deep history of Saudi Arabia, also the traditional culture too. And you even have a special uh, special wagon for people of determination? Yeah, the people of determination too, and, they use uh, this escalator. And special VIPs maybe? Uh, wow. So this is a gate of Qaysariya Souq. It is also a very deep, rich history place too in Saudi Arabia. So you can also see the Nur Wali House in Historic Jeddah, which is also in the UNESCO too. So after we saw the past, of the heritage escalator and we showed you the... It's very the, long escalator. Yeah, the deep history of Saudi Arabia. We also wanted to show you the present, the landed people. We are going to show you the 23 locations in Saudi Arabia, which represents the sightseeing places, the economical places, also the heritage places too. So you can join the circle to take a spectacular view of Saudi Arabia. That's a very special display. It's So we created the circle because we want to connect the people with these lands too. So you may notice, also we have two maps on each location in Saudi Arabia, the yep. right side and the left side too. Also the name of the location is available too. Right. It, it really looks amazing. Um, so it's a very special setup with many LED displays down yeah, here. A lot of people, when they see the location of Mecca, they just uh, stay and enjoy the view because this is like the most iconic uh, scene. It's and the most uh, important place for a, a Muslim, yeah, right? That is correct. Um, everybody wants to go there once, at least. That is correct. So we, this is in Jeddah. We'll have also our first F1 Formula race. It's going to be the first December in Saudi Arabia, in Jeddah. Oh wow! It's going to be the first time we have uh, the F1 Formula race. Uh, how will it compare with the um, Abu Dhabi Cup? Abu Dhabi is also just a few weeks before. Yeah, no? that is correct. We also have in Bahrain and Abu Dhabi the F1 Formula race. But this one will be very iconic because it will go through the old historic Jeddah place. The historic yeah. Jeddah place and the UNESCO because the circuit will also cross in the, circuit, in the waterfront and also in the historic Jeddah and the UNESCO. So we are so the past, the present. Right now we will go to the future. So we will show you 2030 crystals, which also represents the vision of 2030. We are also going to show you the five projects of Saudi Arabia that we have been working on. King Salman Park, Diraya Gate, also the Giddi Art Entertainment, which is going to be the capital city of Riyadh, and also Neom Project and the Red Sea. These projects only represent the part of vision of 2030. But the real vision of 2030 are the Saudi people and their limitless ambitions. If you may notice, this is going to be after nine years and the Giddi Art Entertainment. It's, uh, it's, it's high quality, uh, real and 3D mix, um, graphics yeah, showing. Yeah, we wanted to create a, an escalator, also a scene of how it's going to be after nine years in Saudi Arabia. For example, this is the Diraya Gate after nine years. So uh, there are a lot of projects going on in Saudi Arabia, huh? Yes, right? that is correct, sir. Um, a lot of developments and it, as, as I understand it, it seems that um, Saudi Arabia is impatient to get to the future, yeah, right? right? Now we have a real great uh, royal, uh, King Salman, also his crown prince, Prince Mohammed bin Salman. So this is various vision. We're going to show you four main ideas, universe, nature, culture and the future of Saudi Arabia. Also, this area was created by five Saudi artists. The vision was created by the, quote, His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman when he said, 
Every story begins with a vision. And every successful vision are based on strong true pillars. So right now, we're seeing this kaleidoscope, which also will not change only the future of Saudi Arabia, also the future of the world too. It looked like the moon and then the sun and yeah, Mars. Yeah, right now or... we saw the universe. Right now we're turning to the nature too. You can also see the floor and the interactive, how it changes too, when we walk around it. So it's an interactive giant floor. Every step Every is step we take, it changes also. Making a mark in the so sand. So right now, this the sand, right now these are the water waves. And up here, it's just so huge. Yeah. And it's optically designed, so it just looks gigantic. It looks like uh, I'm looking straight at the blue sun right now. Or is it the sea? The fish? Labyrinth? How long is this show right here? We're going to show the nature and the culture and the culture from this art work from the Saudi art work. From 5 years ago. أم أم فهذا المنطقة نوريهم أيضا رسومات حق خمس رسامين سعودية الكون والطبيعة والثقافة والمستقبل فهذا الرسم أيضا فهنا الطبيعة زي ما تشوفين أخواتي يعطيكم العافية بجيتكم الله شرفتونا alright um, this is really amazing yeah uh, a lot of visitors how long, they... how long does it last so it is a six minute um, show yeah. in the vision so a lot of visitors come here they want to ask more about Saudi Arabia like what are these colors that represent what are these uh, a spectacular view represents in the vision of 2032. Uh, uh, we get a, a cool breeze in here. Um, this globe, it really is huge. And it's really interesting to see how it just floats in the air, it looks like. With all these mirrors, I guess, how it works. It's very smart. Uh, yeah, so is this unique in the world? Yeah, so right now we're showing them the culture of Saudi Arabia like the rock art, rock art mountains in Hayel. So we're showing them history, culture, art in this place too because we want to show the people how Saudi Arabia is going to make a big impact around the world. How we're going also to change the people around us too. So you can also notice this is the Arabic calligraphy of Saudi Arabia. When we also walk around, we also make a, a great image about this place too. Uh, Saudi Arabia has a large population and very young, right? Large and young population. So this is Al Qatt Al Asiri art style. It represents the south region of Saudi Arabia. You can also notice all the colors when we walk around it, and we can also make a great image show about it too, because these arts also represent the culture of Saudi Arabia, and we want to show the art style of Saudi Arabia around the world too. Uh, so I'm hoping this pavilion is gonna stay forever, right? After the expo? I hope so because we have won the platinum lead from the US Green Council building. So our pavilion is a very friendly environmental pavilion too. So this pavilion is powered by 650 solar panels, which is also manufactured in Saudi Arabia too. Are they on the roof? And right now we saw the universe, the nature, the culture. Right now we're also going to the future of Saudi Arabia. So right now we are showing the people how the future of Saudi Arabia is going to be. How we are going to change also the people around us and also the countries around us too. Because we will also want to change the world too from our uh, habits and also from our culture and tradition in Saudi Arabia too. So the Saudi Arabia we want to be a very green country. A country that is also environmentally friendly too. Are we entering the next room? What should, where should we go now? So right now we're going to the Palm Garden next. Okay. So after we saw the past, the present and the future, right now we will go to the Palm Garden. Okay. I hope you like the, the vision. That's ah, amazing. It's really huge. And uh, the design is really cool. Uh, it's been it's a hard work to prepare for the expo, right? Multiple years. To yeah, do all it's these. like every five years. The next one will be in Osaka, Japan. It will be in 2025. So maybe you're already even preparing ideas for that. Yeah. If you can stand here yeah, for a sure, second. Yeah, sure, no problem. So this is the Palm Garden. Every plant that we see around us, it represents the plants yeah. in Saudi Arabia too. 
And so we uh, have the right side, the palms. The left side, we have so many variety of plants which represent the Saudi Arabian regions too. And you just bring them? Yeah, we brought them and we want to show them how the the plants in Saudi Arabia reflects also the palm garden too. So we want also the visitors to come here and enjoy the, the nature and the beauty of Saudi Arabia too. Wow. So uh, to go to the next, we walk down? Yeah, we go to the downstairs to take it to the palm garden. Come with me everyone, it will be right. very enjoyable in the palm garden. Let's check it out. So this is, we are going to the palm garden, we will take you to the cafe called Sard. Sard means telling a story. So we have a cafe that serves the 13 regions of coffee flavors from Saudi Arabia. Each region has its own flavor and story too. And we also talked about the Guinness World Records. We show the two Guinness World Records, the large LED mirror screen and the large interactive lightning floor. Right now we will show you the longest interactive water feature, which represents also the 13 regions of Saudi Arabia. So you can also see this is the water curtain, which also represents the 30 regions of Saudi Arabia. It's also the one of the longest interactive water feature in the Guinness World Records. It is 90 meters square meters, 90 square meters. How does it work? How does it interrupt the, the water flow? It's a bunch of, it's basically like pixel, water pixels. Yeah, so this water, it is also environmental friendly water because it is also, the, the water becomes filtered too. And also the water, it becomes like something very environmental friendly water too. Because it is 32 meters long and this water is 90 square meters. So also this screen, it shows you the 13 regions of Saudi Arabia. Come with me, Nicholas. All right. You can uh, draw anything you like on the water? Yeah, we choose 30 regions. Right now it's every 30 seconds. So they chose the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, which represents the culture. So a lot of people, we have four screens on each side on this place too. So you can choose each side represents the image of Saudi Arabia too. For example, we have 13 regions of Saudi Arabia and two of them also represents the culture of Saudi Arabia. So when we choose Hayyan and the north region of Saudi Arabia, it also shows you the camel too. And also when we chose the Arabian leopard, it shows you also the image of the Arabian leopard too. Uh, the A Arabian leopard is, uh, there's many of them? Right now we're trying uh, to, to increase the population of the Arab Arabian leopard because right now we don't want them to go extinct in Saudi Arabia. Yeah, this must be an amazing sight yeah. to see one, right? So right now we, we will go to the Sarf Cafe right now. And we also have so many um, art entertainments too, like for the children's show. A lot of kids, they enjoy also the, the story about Saudi Arabia. And every weekend, we also have music festivals too, and around this place too. So From Thursday until Saturday, we have these Arabic instruments uh, performance. And this is the Sart Cafe. So all the stuff are from Saudi Arabia. So we have each cup represents 13 regions of Saudi Arabia too. Can I go close to yeah, sure. So, so what are we looking at here? So the coffee beans are the same, but each region has its own uh, flavor. And also they have also their own story too. All right, so you can get uh, maybe the Expo's best coffee here? Yeah, like uh, we have also, when we sell the landed people, we also had the Khawlani coffee beans and we also the sell the the Khalani coffee beans too. It's considered really uh, expensive coffee and also very high grade and very um, high quality of the when, coffee when beans too. When people choose uh, Arabica uh, coffee beans, it's, it's coming from that tradition? Yeah, it's coming from also from each region of Saudi Arabia, but mostly they import it from the south of Saudi Arabia, also in Yemen too. All right. From these coffee beans. And over there you have like a... A gift shop gift too. shop? Yeah. You can walk through? Sure, no problem. All right. So what are you selling there? So everything uh, we sell uh, represents the culture of Saudi Arabia, also the, the culture of the Saudi Pavilion too. So you can see the notebooks, the bags, so everything represents also the culture of Saudi Arabia too. So we also have the Rosia, it represents the Taif region, the west of Saudi Arabia. It's created by Saudi females too in the west region of Saudi Arabia, like the body lotion, the 
the body perfume. So it was, it's considered the most uh, selling uh, stock in the Saudi pavilion. A lot of people, they buy from these boxes, from the Rose ZR. And there's uh, more perfumes down here? Yeah, these perfumes Oil? also represent of Saudi Arabia. All right. A lot of stuff people can take home from here. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And some hats? Hats, clothes, also um, emblems, Collectors a lot of things. already. All right. Um, but uh, there's a bunch more of the exhibition, right? Yeah, right now we're showing you the Discovery Center next. Okay. Come with me, Nicholas. What is he talking about? So he's talking about how Saudi Arabia was founded and how the oil was uh, been discovered. And, uh, and this show goes on uh, every hour or something? Yeah, like every hour we have this show. And different shows maybe? Yeah, we have and, and weekend, during the night, uh, from Thursday until Saturday we have Arabic performance. They bring Saudi musicians, they, they play um, Oud and so, so many Arabic songs too. So these are the plants of Saudi Arabia, and during the during the during the during the morning, it shows also the light that comes from these circles too. So it's a really relaxing way when they come during the morning too, or during the evening. And uh, around here, people are getting their stamps and their passports, right? So right now, we'll go to the Discovery Center. So this is the Discovery Center. We will show you something that represents all the summary that we have been through throughout the Saudi Pavilion journey. So on the right side, it talks about the details of the design of the pavilion and what we saw in the, the Saudi Pavilion from the past, the present, and the future of Saudi Arabia. In the opportunity area, what, yeah. what is your message about the opportunity? We want to show them that Saudi Arabia will also be, will be one of the, will be the greatest country also in the world, and we also want to make a great impact too around the world. It's and we very, also, we have very a great big, vision too. Very big and large population, and uh, uh, fast uh, development, right? Uh, gr the growing economy. Yeah. So these are like the the summary that we have been through. We have been through the heritage escalators. It shows you the 14 heritage places, five have listed in the UNESCO, but three months ago we have listed the Hummam Najran in Saudi Arabia, three months ago, so it's actually six. That's a, an extremely long uh, uh, escalator. Yeah. I don't see those in malls very often. That's correct. Very long. All right. And this is the land and people that we have saw about the sightseeing places in Saudi Arabia. And this is the, the true identity escalator. We showed you the five projects of Saudi Arabia too. Because the Red Sea is also part of Neom too. So it's five projects. And the, the vision, is that one of the World Guinness? Uh, no, the vision is in the World Guinness. It says the, the Kiel skill in New York. We have like, they have the biggest kaleidoscope in New York. Oh, wow. Kaleidoscopes are awesome. That's yeah. amazing experience. Uh, so this is the, the table that also is the same shape of Saudi Arabia or the same map of Saudi Arabia. And also we have 1,000 data about Saudi Arabia too. So it's interactive and touch giant screen. Yeah, so we also have brought six sectors from six ministries in Saudi Arabia. Each uh, sector they have a representative too. So we have the economy, investment, kingdom, art of, of culture and, and energy and transformation, nature and tourism, also sight and nation too. So what happens when you click on them? So when we click on them, we will know more information about Saudi Arabia. Like meet Saudi, things to do, places to see. So when we choose places to see, it's also, also about the shortcuts, about a lot of details about Saudi Arabia. So like when we try to choose the, the central region of Saudi Arabia, so it tells you where to go in Riyadh too. Like, what are the things that Central Region and Saudi Arabia can offer? 
and uh, a lot of people can touch at the same time. Yeah, so like we have a lot of um, from each uh, side of the map of Saudi Arabia or the table, a lot of people can choose the the ideas or the things to to enjoy in the table about the data information about Saudi Arabia. I'm guessing is a lot of projectors and some sensors somehow that know where you're touching. Yeah, that is true because it's also working on the projector too, and it's also very uh, it's very sensitive. It's like very sensitive nice. because um, like even without touching it, it also reads too. Nice. Is there there's not some kind of competition? People can play around the table. It's not like a competition, but it's like. Like how the shape of Saudi Arabia or the map shows you, like because every 30 seconds, the image of the table also changes too. Right. And uh, on the walls in the back, some projectors. Yeah, these and are the representative of each minister of Saudi Arabia have transformation, energy, and ministry of tourism. Should we um, walk around the different screens a little sure. bit? Sure. Uh, so these are beautiful, but it's just mirrors. Yeah, it's mirrors. Uh, let's uh, start over there. Yeah, quick. sure. Yeah. Hello, welcome. Uh, my name is Yahya Bin Laden. I'm here representing the National Transformation Program, and we're here speaking about the transformation theme in Saudi Arabia. So there have been many avenues of transformation in Saudi Arabia. We're here to highlight six of the main avenues. Digital transformation, women empowerment, lifestyle, social development, youth are the future, excellence in government services. So if we take, for example, we start with women empowerment, we can see that Saudi Arabia has changed a lot in the systems and the regulations regarding uh, enabling women to participate in the, in the, in the workforce. So with, women now have access to the tourism sector, to the military sector, and the legal sector, as well as being part of the consultative assembly. We've also nomi nominated our first uh, Saudi female ambassador, Princess Rima bint Bandar. She's our ambassador to the U.S. These efforts have all led to Saudi participation of women to increase from 22% to 32% from 2016. Now, if we take a look at digital transformation, we've created a lot of national platforms which allow Saudis to have better access to services. For example, we have Sekani platform, which allows people to own homes, own land, buy and develop uh, land, and give them more of an opportunity to house and have their own real estate. And this is electronic? This is all electronic. These are all electronic platforms which allow Saudis to, for example, Sekani platform allows Saudis to own homes and has led to 62% of Saudis owning homes by the end of 2021, Q2 2021. We also That's have That's a very nice percentage compared to other countries, right? Yes, 62% is considered a high percentage. We aim to have it even higher in the coming years as we gain momentum and as we have more people access the platform. Uh, and we so also it's basically it's just an app? It's, there is an app, there's a website, whichever way uh, the user finds more comfortable to use it. There's a service line to call if there's any issues or if there's anything that needs extra service. So these are all supporting services that allow people to use it comfortably and be happy using it. We also have Najid's platform, which is our legal platform that allows you to access 120 judicial services all online. Uh, these services uh, pertain to agencies, real estate transfers, even raising uh, courts and raising uh, for hearings. So we have also our judicial hearings are conducted remotely. Many of the judicial hearings now are conducted remotely with translation services uh, implemented within them. So the judge can be there with the plaintiffs and if any of them do not speak Arabic, they can develop, uh, they can introduce a translator who can translate it live within the hearing and give all of everyone a fair shot at being heard in front of the judge. We've also developed uh, our Foros platform, which is a, a platform which allows people to invest in municipal uh, efforts. So if there's a park, for instance, and it has a small bakery in it, that bakery can, many people can look at it online through the platform and invest in it. And, and so have an opportunity which otherwise they wouldn't have known about. So it's like a micro-investment yes, platform? Yes, micro, it's a micro-investment platform specifically designed for the municipal sector to allow the municipal sector to develop and also to give people an opportunity to invest. So it's a meeting of opportunities. And I guess the, 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 the government yes. uh, invests heavily everywhere in the country? 
uh, the government is investing heavily in developing the country. So these platforms were all government initiated, uh, if not government operated fully, and they've all led to enhancements in their particular sectors. So for example, the Saudi Business Center is, co is related to the commerce sector, and it allows a person to generate a uh, start a business within 30 minutes. All the government entities involved are tied into the business center. There are all over 200 services offered, so it's really a one-stop shop for starting and operating a business Can in Saudi Can you explain Arabia. a little bit? Um, so you need to be a Saudi uh, uh, citizen to start a company in Saudi Arabia? Uh, you can be a Saudi citizen. You can also be uh, anyone who has a license to operate within Saudi Arabia commercially can go into, go into the Saudi Business Center and start a business within 30 minutes. 30 minutes, and uh, how does it work with the uh, uh, taxes and everything? Is easy to set up, and uh, yeah. is there a price to set up a company, or? Uh, depending on the type and the form of company, there are certain uh, uh, fees required, but the smaller companies uh, it can take anywhere from 180 seconds Higher companies which require articles, company articles, company bylaws and such may take up to half an hour. But half an hour up to a day if there are other legal in uh, interests at work up to, to start a business, which is I considered it, one of the this best. This is good for startups. This tech, is amazing. High tech startups? Yeah, for all startups. Uh, Saudi Arabia was the highest riser in uh, starting a business in terms of the doing business report from the World Bank. Saudi Arabia was the highest uh, rising country in terms of starting a business. Um, and that's one of the efforts that uh, we're very proud of and it's one of the efforts that allows Saudis to participate in the labor force uh, quickly and efficiently. We also have a Sahati platform, which is a national application which allows you to receive medical consultations through the app. You can get your prescriptions through the app and you can even use the, those prescriptions with other apps that are related to pharmacies to get your medication delivered straight to your home. Is so it can, free healthcare? This is free. Free this, healthcare uh, for service, everybody in Saudi Arabia? Uh, this particular service has free, uh, is free to all residents in Saudi Arabia. So any resident can access the, the service, get the consultation for free. And physicians uh, sitting behind there? And yes, the physician is on the other side of the screen. They can examine the patient uh, digitally. Uh, through through the camera, and they can prescribe medications and send them to them through the through the application. So far, we've serviced over 2.9 million users through this platform, and it was a very, very big boon to Saudi Arabia during the COVID crisis and during the the difficult times. And it's that. very recent. This uh, service has been launched uh, a few years back, but it was really put to the test during the COVID crisis, and during the COVID crisis, it really showcased that Saudi Arabia had a system in place to deal with uh, sudden crises such as this. All right. All right. So all of this has led Saudi Arabia to be the top riser among G20 countries in digital competitiveness. And in order to make sure that this, these benefits are given to all Saudis and all people living in Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia has invested heavily in 5G networks and making sure that they permeate throughout the kingdom. So Saudi Arabia is the first in terms of the uh, deployment of 5G networks in the Middle East and the fourth globally. So uh, there's uh, very easy to get a nice good SIM card with fast data speeds and yeah, upload. Very, Everybody has fast internet? Very easy to get uh, fast internet. Internet access is throughout Saudi Arabia. Fast internet access is throughout all the major cities in Saudi Arabia av available and being deployed further and further as we speak. Maybe even using satellites in the more remote areas? There are uh, satellite, uh, there are uh, Potentially. 3G networks yeah. operating in the more remote areas and rural areas covering all of Saudi. But the high speed networks are available in all of the major cities in Saudi Arabia and being deployed more and more as we speak. All right, so very busy uh, ministry, right? Very And with uh, a big, big uh, job to accomplish. Yes, we're, we're a program, not a ministry. The ah, your program. Yes, a national yeah. transformation program. Very busy. These are the efforts of the entire vision of Saudi Arabia, not just the program itself. And thankfully, all of these efforts are culminating in, in these achievements you see in front of you with many more to come, hopefully. Nice. Thanks yeah. a lot. Okay, thank uh, you. Do you have a, so th this, 
we were just checking one of the screens here. Uh, is there like a screen talking more about uh, like uh, tourism and stuff like that? Tourism, yes, my colleagues. Right over there. The Maybe we can yes, see. Absolutely. I heard there's a big push in Saudi Arabia with the tourism industry. Yes. Right. Yeah. So it's easy to get in. Uh, is it like nearly no need for a visa? You get it when you arrive, or no? We have an e visa system. These are the eligible countries to apply for the e visa. So um, it looks like a lot of Europe, most of yes, Europe, US. even uh, Ukraine and uh, yes. many other countries around here. Yes. And then we have Asian countries, yes. Canada, US. Yes. And uh, they just go online. On yeah, the they just bought, uh, scan this barcode from their phone, takes them directly to our website. That website, they can add their information and documents needed. And as soon as they submit, it's around briefly from five minutes to 30 minutes, and then you'll have the visa. And yeah. uh, then you just fly over and you can yes. go anywhere in the country? Yes, it's for multiple visits for one year. Nice. And how long can you stay on each visit? As much you, you want. Yeah. You could stay the whole year if you want. Uh, no, it's for 90 days for 90 one days. visit. And All right. if for multiple, it's 180 days. All right. Yes. Uh, so is this very popular? Many tourists are coming with yes. this? Yes. Here we also have the Saudi calendar. So there's calendar with um, events that will be... Yes. Uh, this is the biggest music festival, Middle Beast Sound Store. Here also they can scan the barcode, takes them directly to the link of the tickets. 200 global superstar headliners yes. are going to be there. Yes. It's is just in December. Yes. It's very soon. Yes. Wow. And this is a good weather, uh, good temperature in yes, December. Yes, it's in Riyadh. It's in, in the winter. It's cold it's in Riyadh. And uh, they can even book their ticket right there. Yes. From scanning this barcode, takes them directly to our website. Wow. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, so, um, all right, and there's so there's music festivals, but many, yeah. many other things, right? Yes. Also have the first formula. It's formula gonna one. Be in Jeddah, it's in the also in December. December. Yes. But maybe it's fully booked, or it's maybe possible to find tickets uh, online. We'll yeah, see. Yeah, possible. Yeah. It's possible, <laughs> and maybe it's a big yeah. arena. Yeah. A space for a lot of people. Yeah. All right. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank so that's a really impressive big uh, pavilion that you have here and a yeah. lot of stories to tell. Yeah, we, we, our pavilion is right now the most uh, population pavilion that have came from every visitors in this, uh, the Expo 2020 debate. We saw the past, the present and the future of Saudi Arabia and we also saw the Guinness World Records from the Saudi Pavilion. So this pavilion we want to show, to show you how the Vision 2030 is going to be after nine years. I'm, my name is Yosef, Yusuf, and it is also my place to be your tour guide, Nicholas, in this and, pavilion. Uh, just uh, to, to finish off, uh, what is this area here? So this is the palm garden for the VIP guests. So wow. every VIP guest, when they come to this pavilion, they see the views of this pavilion too, and the sightseeing inside the pavilion, inside the pavilion too. All right. Thanks a lot. Um, welcome, I hope people got like a feeling like they were there. You're right, welcome, it's amazing. Nicholas. But uh, everybody's welcome. Dubai is easy to fly to and still until March. That is correct. Until the 31st of March, our pavilion will be open to every guest who comes to the Saudi Pavilion.